Hello friends, this is Data Guru from Infolumia. Today we will discuss about views in Microsoft SQL Server. So, let's first understand the views by standard definition. A view is a virtual table whose contents are defined by a query. You can say, a view is a virtual table based on the result set of an SQL statement. It means, suppose we have a query on one table or multiple tables by using joins between these tables, by creating a SQL Server view, we can create virtual table. Here virtual table means we are storing a query by a name is called view. Like a table, a view consists of a set of named columns and rows of data. Unless indexed, a view does not exist as a stored set of data values in a database. The rows and columns of data come from tables referenced in the query defining the view and are produced dynamically when the view is referenced. Here we used one term, indexed, actually we have indexed views, we will understand later in this video about indexed views. A view acts as a filter on the underlying tables referenced in the view. The query that defines the view can be from one or more tables or from other views in the current or other databases. Let's have the simple example, we have three tables. Table A, Table B, and Table C. Table A has columns call 1, call 2, and call 3. Table B has columns call 1, call 4, and call 5. Table C has columns call 1, call 6, and call 7. Let's create view from all these three tables. Output of view will have columns call 1, call 2, call 4, and call 7. In the same manner we can select any columns from all the tables, whatever is required. Now let's understand the syntax of view, how we can create the views. Here in example 1. We are creating view from the one table from employee. Which is available under schema human resources. Syntax is like. Create view view name, here our view name if my first view. So here we will write. Create view my first view as. Here as is the keyword which is mandatory. Underlying query is select national ID number, comma, marital status from human resources dot employee. Then we have final syntax is create view my first view as select national ID number, comma, marital status from Human resources, dot, employee. You can see in this image how our view is created. And in this image we can see the result when we fetch the data from view, my first view. Now come to example 2. Here we are creating a view having multiple columns. All columns are taken from multiple tables by joining each other. We are fetching. Business entity ID. Title. First name. Middle name. Last name, suffix, job title, etc. From different tables, employee, person, address, state proving, country region, person phone, phone number type, email address, which are in different schema and joined based on their relationship. Now you can see how the view is created and what are the columns of view. This look like a table, but actually this is a virtual table. Data is not stored anywhere, only definition of view is stored and whenever we will fetch data from view. This will actually fetch data from all underlying tables. And result from the view will be like that. Now we know what are the views and how we create them. This is the time to understand the advantage of views. First advantage is. Views can represent a subset of the data contained in a table. Consequently, a view can limit the degree of exposure of the underlying tables to the outer world, a given user may have permission to query the view, while denied access to the rest of the base table. There are many scenarios in practical life where we don't want to expose all the data columns available as the table. In this case we can create the view with selected columns and provide the permission to the user for this view only. In this case he or she will be able to access only for those columns we expose to him or her. Second advantage. Views can join and simplify multiple tables into a single virtual table. This is same as we shown in last example. We were fetching data from multiple tables, but we do not write to complicated query again and again, 
we can simply fetch the data from view. Third advantage is. Views can act as aggregated tables. Where the database engine aggregates data, sum, average, etc., and presents the calculated results as part of the data. In this was we can have aggregates result instead of whole data form tables. Fourth advantage is. Views can hide the complexity of data. For example, a view could appear as sales 2021 or sales 2022, transparently partitioning the actual underlying table. Another advantage is. Views take very little space to store, the database contains only the definition of a view, not a copy of all the data that it presents. Further advantage. Depending on the SQL engine used, views can provide extra security. So guys. I am sure. Now you are clear about what are the views in Microsoft SQL Server, and what the advantage of views. Now we will understand different type is views. Besides the standard role of basic user-defined views, we studied in previous slides. SQL Server provides the following types of views. That serve special purposes in a database. First is indexed views. Second is partitioned views. Third is system views. Let's understand about indexed view. Indexed views to enhance the performance of s Okay. Let's try to create index on simple view. You will see. This is giving the error. C cannot create index on view my first view because the view is not schema bound. Actually we cannot create the index on simple view. First we have to create view with schema binding. Then we can create a unique clustered index on schema binding views only. In such case, whenever we add a unique clustered index to a view, materialized view is created. Materialized views are disk-based and are updated periodically based upon the query definition. In other words, the view persists to disk with its own page structure, and we can treat it just like a normal table. Now you will have question in your mind where to use indexed views. Indexed views have both a benefit and a cost. The benefit is that Query Optimizer provides more efficient and faster results for complex and redundant queries. The cost of an indexed view is on the maintenance of the clustered index. In the following scenario, indexed view can be used. First, when you use the same complex query on many tables, multiple times. Second, when new system need to read old table data, but doesn't watch to change their supposed schema. Best environments suited for indexed views are Data warehouses Data marts Olive databases But transactional environment are less suitable for indexed view. Now conclusion on partition view is If we are creating a view for complex queries that are executing very frequently then instead of normal view always use indexed view. In other remaining cases normal views are beneficial. Before using the indexed view always consider your requirement and after that make a decision to use clustered index. Now come to partition views. Partition views. A partition view is a view defined by a union all of member tables structured in the same way, but stored separately as multiple tables in either the same instance of SQL Server or in a group of autonomous instances of SQL Server servers called federated database servers. Partition view enables us to logically split huge amounts of data into smaller pieces of data ranges using specific column values. To achieve this, we use check constraint. We need to define the check constraint in every table based on column used in the partition view. The partition view uses union all to select all the participating tables as one result. When we applying or condition in the check constraint column in the view, it will directly fetch the data on the specific table using check constraint and avoid scanning records in other tables so it is improving the query performance. If the check constraint is not defined in the participating tables, the SQL Server Query Optimizer will search in all participating tables within the view to return the result. Till now we are clear about Normal views Indexed views And partition views Now come to system views. The system views are views that contain internal information about a database. Internal information means System views expose catalog metadata. The master database for example contains information about the SQL Server itself. While the MSDB database contain information about the SQL Server agent. And each database has its own system views slash tables. You can use system views to return information about the 
instance of SQL Server or the objects defined in the instance. For example, you can query the sys.databases catalog view to return information about the user-defined databases available in the instance. So here is the list of some system views. And, and here we have some examples of system views. These queries from system views will return the list of tables in database. These queries from system views will return the list of views in database. These queries from system views will return the list of stored procedures in database. You can explore many more queries based on system views, just start exploring them randomly, I am sure you will really enjoy. When you will play system views. After exploring them Toy will have deep and good understanding about the SQL Server. So, guys. This is all about system views. Till now we must have good understanding about the views in SQL Server. But still we have one question which always confused people. Can we update data through views in SQL Server? Or somebody can ask. What is or what are updatable views? Here is the answer. Yes we can update data through view, but not from every view. There are certain limitations. First. An update statement against a view can only affect one target table at a time. Second, your update statement cannot update data in a derived column. There really isn't anything special you need to do to a view to make it updatable. Instead, there are simply some rules you need to be aware of when running insert, update, or delete operations against a view. I assume you have permission in SQL Server to perform DML statements to a view. In my opinion, views aren't really meant to have update, insert, or delete statements ran against them too often. They're meant to run with select statements to gather useful information through simple commands. So, if you can, resist a urge to perform your updates against the view. Instead, modify the underlying tables instead. So, guys this is all about views in SQL Server. I was planning to put more examples. For more clarifications. But also avoided to create lengthy video, that's why I restricted myself with few lines and examples. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask the question in comment box, I will surely reply and will create another video. If needed. Thanks for watching and learning from Infolumia. Goodbye. Take care. Have fun.